In discussing the burning issue of restructuring the political and administrative framework of Nigeria, a major question to be addressed is how can we effectively manage ethnic and religious plurality plurality and diversity in our federation. Added to this is the question on whether the political architecture of Nigeria is truly reflective of the federalist principles which the founding fathers of Nigeria envisaged and practiced. Leadership counts, but if leadership fails, then let's chop up the leadership, which is literally what everybody has been saying. Restructuring. Restructuring. Thank you very much. Reconfigure everything, place less burden on the shoulders of the uh, man at the top, the center. When I said this at the beginning of the COVID uh, uh, um, struggle, anti-COVID struggle, I said decentralized from the very beginning. You had some, you know, master's voices talking garbage over there. You say I should start, I should keep writing books, you know. I will, and I will feature them. And I hope they will like their roles in the books and say, say that's what I should be doing. But now I, I listened, and it's not just now. Shortly after that, I, the second speech of Buhari to the nation over there was already acknowledging the need for decentralization. Okay. And so this most recent one in which they've now thrown everything back. But when we have, you know, just ignoramus, like uh, the spokesman of, I don't want to mention his name, like Buhari, challenging something which I said, and in such, a, such an insulting manner, you, you, and then you come round to that very position, and you don't even have the decency to apologize and say, oh, Wallace Shoenka said this from the very beginning. Maybe if we had tackled it this way, the situation wouldn't be as dire as now. But no, they both had their garbage, and sunk into their holes, giving wrong advice, you know, and speaking, taking over functions that should belong, you know, functions which we saddled the leadership with. <laughs> the nation is doomed. That's all, I, that's all I can say. Meanwhile, the lawmaker representing Ukwa East and Ukwa West Federal Constituency of the Abbey State, Honorable Uzoma. Nkem Abonta has called on the federal government to revisit the call for restructuring of the nation's system of government following the current economic downturn brought about by the coronavirus pandemic. Honorable Nkem Abonta says restructuring will help states recover from the pandemic and thrive once again. We must restructure in a way that will be one Nigeria with states. Now, every state government will come to wait for FAC because we get. But if you restructure, some may not need FAC. May not need FAC. They will be able to double. They will be able to work. Let me tell you, Lagos is a good example why we must restructure. Things are working there on their own. Their system, if they improve on it, is good. So states must be encouraged to do that. So we must sit down, bring out some old reports about restructuring, look at it again, and begin to restructure post mail to revamp agriculture speedily, to provide the staple foods that people will eat while we wait to recover from it. If there's food scarcity now, we are facing it. And if we can't finance our budget because our story because it's based on oil, how about our solid mineral? Except we do the radical positive things now. Joining us now to talk restructuring and other issues is legal practitioner Libora Soshoma. Thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure, thank you. We're also joined virtually by Nafisat Atiku Abubakar, who is also a legal practitioner. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. All right, let's start with you, uh, Barrister. When we talk about restructuring, exactly what do we mean? Because there's so much variation. Yeah, um, you know, because um, that's the confusing part when people say, okay, so what are we restructuring? Um, anyhow you look at it, 
Nigeria as presently constituted is not the way a federation one should be. It's not the way um, states should be run. It's not the way local government should be run. If you look at it financially also, it is not the way it should be run. If you look at, um, look at the different arms of government also, the legislature, the executive and the judiciary. So all of this, anywhere you want to start from, start from somewhere, provided, uh, according to David Livingstone, he said, I'll follow you anywhere as long as it be forward. And, and so the issue is start from somewhere. Look at the local government structures, for example. Look at the viability of the states, for example. Why will um, uh, states at every turn run to Abuja for, for, for funds. So it's almost as if we are running a, running a feeding bottle system of government. And so let's start from that restructuring. The state. Look at even the policing structure. You know, so when you, we uh, operate a federal system of government, and, and so how is a federal system of government run? The way we are running us, is that the way you run a federal system of government or the states are independent or quasi-independent. Financially, they collect revenue and they contribute to the running of the center. But here, the center collects and then give to the states according to what they feel they need. And so, if you are talking about restructuring and people do not understand what we mean by restructuring, let's even start from the structure that we operate, the federal structure, and ask ourselves, where we copied it from, is this the way it is run? If that's the way it is run, then there is no need for restructuring. But if that's not the way, then we should truly, first and foremost, structure it to run Before the we... way it is, it, is, it is run. All right, let's bring uh, Nafisad um, in. Um, are we exaggerating the significance of restructuring? Is it the magic wand that will help reposition this country as it were? Well, um, I do agree with the earlier speaker on the fact that we do have a lot of power in the sense, and really that's not how a um, that's not how federalism operates. But is it the magic one that will change everything? I do not exactly think so. I think it's going to be a long-term process that we as a country have to work through because we don't entirely understand what has been going on for a very long time. The states have been very dependent on getting resources and revenue. From the center, they are they are how I put it, they are dependent on the center. They are not used to um, getting revenue or um, how I put it, getting wealth, wealth creation from the resources that they have in the state because they literally have no authority over that. Take for example the mineral resources that are domiciled in every state. The federal the federal government has total control over the mineral resources, over the petroleum resources. The states have no control whatsoever to use that to create wealth for their individual, you know, their individual um, constituencies. So is it the magic one that would change everything? I do believe that restructuring is definitely the right way to go, but it is a long-term process. It basically has to do with dev devolution of power and fiscal federalism, and that's where I'm going to come from. Where do we begin? If we are to say, for instance, today, we've accepted that we want to restructure this country, where do we begin? I told you already, begin from what you practice. It's what, what you're practicing currently. You say you're practicing a federal system of government. Yeah, it, it's, it's enough to say it in um, a yeah, general perspective. But so in, are we, in tiny are you, bits, what are we starting Are you with? truly practicing a federal system of government? That's the first question you should ask yourself. You know, what are the characteristics of a federal system of government? Characteristics of a federal system of government is that the states are independent to a very large extent, this financially, the state collects revenue. The states are in charge of their mineral resources. I can't have a mango, a mango tree in my house, and I need clearance from Abuja to assess the tree. At the end of the day, what it means is that that mango tree belongs to no one, and anybody can assess it, and including me. You know, so I can steal from it. If you start from there, let's look at. Um, of financial autonomy. And then also, the followers would be able to know that, okay, yes, the autonomy, financial autonomy lies here. I don't need to excuse away my governor. I don't need to excuse away my local government. Because the problem here is that the governors who are shouting financial autonomy also do not want financial autonomy for local government. 
But that is the government that is closest to the people. Why will a local government chairman cry to the government? Well, will that to be a fair position? Roads? If you say financial autonomy, the, the federal government has signed the executive um, order 10, and there's a slight delay, that's, even though the government. That's what I'm telling saying, you that the governors do not want financial autonomy for the local government. Meanwhile, they are shouting that they, they want financial autonomy from the federal government. And so that's the irony of all of this. Okay. You know, no sincerity of purpose. What we need to start with is sincerity of purpose for our elected leaders. Once we have that sincerity of purpose, both the followers and the led would be able to channel their energy to ask the right question to say, are we truly and indeed practicing a federal system of government? If we are not, then we need to work it out and say, look, starting from the local government that we, that we currently practice. What are the functions of local government? As I speak to you, in, if you look at the 1999 Constitution, the local government is almost non-existent. Apart from the fact that Section 9 says that a democratically elected local government is hereby guaranteed, and that's all. Okay, let's bring Nafisat um, in again. Um, uh, Libora said sincerity of purpose. But there is argument that any system is open to abuse, irrespective of how well um, organized and planned it is. What's your take? Well, um, you're right, definitely. Every system is um, subject to abuse or susceptible to abuse. What would then happen is that you need to put on institutional safeguards to make sure that doesn't happen. Because man is man and man makes mistakes and, you know, there are sort of a lot of negative traits that we do have. What we don't need in Nigeria and Africa as a whole are strong men, but what we do need are strong institutions that will curtail the excesses of anyone who we put in government to serve the interests of the people. That's the only way it works. All right, well, quick thought. Do you think that we can all agree on a particular uh, modus operandi? It's difficult to agree, for all of us to agree on the modus operandi. That's why we need, you know, a transparent electoral process so that the rule of the majority will carry the day. Simple. Thank you very much, Barrister, for coming to the studio. And, My of pleasure. course, a thank you to Nafisa Atiku Abubakar for joining us on the news. You're welcome.